Hello students, today we are going to be talking about various different inoculation techniques and the three uh, specific techniques we're talking about is how to inoculate from a broth culture to a broth culture, a broth culture to a slant, and a broth culture to a plate. Now let's start with the broth to broth. So when we say broth, what we're talking about is nutrient broth. This is a tube of uninoculated nutrient broth, and you can see that it is clear. There's no cloudiness in the tube, and that indicates that um, uh, this tube has not yet been inoculated. Um, and we know that this is sterile because this just came out of our autoclave, which is the machine that we use to sterilize uh, lab medium. Okay, so if we want to get some bacteria in here and grow it, what we need to do is take bacteria from a tube that already has some bacteria growing in it, and we need to transfer that or inoculate it into this uninoculated tube. And so we have some tubes here, like this one here. You can see that this is nutrient broth that has uh, been inoculated, and it was inoculated and incubated for about 24 hours, and it's quite cloudy, okay? And this one has E. coli in it. You can see at the bottom, there's a little pellet there, and there's some cloudiness here. Now, the pellet indicates that that is dead bacteria that have eventually fallen down and sunk to the bottom, forming this little pellet, and then on top, these bacteria are likely still alive, um, uh, and we can use those to transfer to the uninoculated tube. So we're basically gonna go from this tube here to the new tube, okay? And so to get the bacteria in there, we use an inoculation loop. And what we do is we first must resuspend this pellet here. So when we resuspend a pellet, what you wanna do is hold the tube like this and spin it, and that'll vortex any pellet on the bottom and make a uniform solution so that we are transferring the maximum amount of bacteria uh, with our inoculation loop. So what you do is you, you uh, use uh, aseptic technique and get your loop in there, okay? And you're gonna pick up a small volume of the uh, bacteria in there, and you're just going to dip it in here, you wiggle it around a little bit to release the bacteria, and then once you've inoculated it, you're going to cover it with a cap. And there'll be some bacteria in there. And we wanna leave this cap loose to allow for air to get in and also to get out because the bacteria, as they grow, will need to respire. Okay, the only exception to that is if you're growing a strict anaerobe, in which case you would want to close the tube all the way, um, but the bacteria that we're working with here um, do need oxygen and they need to, to respire, so we're going to leave the caps loose. Okay, so the next one here is from broth to slant. Now, here's an uninoculated nutrient auger slant. So it's the same formulation as the nutrient auger um, broth, except it has some auger, or uh, same formulation as the nutrient broth, except this one has auger in it, which is uh, going to cause the medium to form kind of like a jello-like consistency and that provides a surface onto which um, bacteria can grow on that slanted portion there. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is um, go from a broth culture and we're going to transfer it to this uh, nutrient auger slant. To do that, again, under aseptic, using your aseptic technique, we go into the tube with our inoculation loop, and we just transfer some here. Now, to transfer it in here, what you're gonna do is make a line on the surface of the slanted portion here, straight line. Okay, if you're looking at it from the other direction, okay, because you can look at it from the side, or you can look at it from the front like this, what you wanna do is start here and just um, drag your inoculation loop down um, so that or up so that you can make a line okay and then again once you're done you're gonna put the cap on make sure that there is a loose cap there okay so that air can get in and out and 
and that will allow the bacteria to uh, respire as they're growing. And the final inoculation that we need to do is from broth culture to a plate. And to do that, we're going to be using the streak plate method. So this is a plate of nutrient auger. It says Na for nutrient auger. It's the same formulation as what we had for the nutrient auger slant, um, except instead of putting it um, in a tube and putting it on its side to form that slant uh, when it cools, we've put it in a plate. And if you look at the plate from the side, you can see that there's the, the lid here. This is the top part. Uh, this bottom part here is the base where we put the auger. Okay, so always make sure you know which side's the cap and which side's the base. Okay, uh, because you always want to pour the media into the base, not the cap, when you're preparing this. So we're just going to go from our broth to our plate. To do that, you must follow these steps exactly as I show you, and that will maximize your success of getting individual colonies, which is the whole point of doing the street plate method, is we want to get isolated colonies. And this technique allows us to do that by making a dilution on a single plate and to do that, we're going to start by dipping our inoculation loop into the medium. Now, remember to always resuspend the pellet before you stick your loop in, and always flame your loop to incinerate any microbes that may be on your loop. Cool it, work next to your flame. All of the techniques that have uh, been outlined in the previous video on aseptic technique. So when we do the first transfer, you're only going to transfer to about this area right here. We don't want to do the whole plate because the whole idea is to make a dilution. So we want to leave space here to spread the bacteria out um, uh, in the next few steps. Okay, so pretending this is my loop here, I go into the culture, pick up bacteria, and I'm going to do this sort of pattern on the surface of the plate. So this is your first streak in this first quadrant, the plate. Notice I didn't use the whole plate. Okay, I'm just doing it in this portion here. Now, my loop has millions of bacteria still on it, and I want to make a dilution in this area. If I streak out this way, then the same dilution I have here is going to be here, which is the original amount of bacteria. So what I need to do is flame this to kill the bacteria. Okay, so you're going to flame the loop. And when it's cool, what you're going to do is instead of going back in, which we're not going to do, so when it's cool, you want to start here. So pretending this is your loop. Start here and you're going to drag one, two, three, and four times. So you're making four lines. And what you're doing is you're dragging the bacteria that you've deposited here and you're bringing them out this way. And you're only bringing a small portion of the bacteria out to this area from your original uh, first streak. So you should naturally get less bacteria in this area compared to your first streak. So after you streak and you flame, then you're going to streak in your second quadrant. And let's remind ourselves, do not dip into the tube again. Okay, so you're not going to go back in here and do the second one. Okay. Once you do the first one, that's it. You don't need to go back in there. And so we're just reminding ourselves here, don't go back in there and dip and then do the four. You're just going to flame the loop and drag out from here. Okay, and ensure your loop is cooled 
So you want to hold it next to your semi-sterile area for a little bit, kind of shake it around, make sure it's cool before you come in and you streak. Now, again, your uh, inoculation loop here is going to be, um, it's going to have lots of bacteria on it, and so we want to get rid of that bacteria. Again, we're going to flame the loop to incinerate any microbes on there, cool it, and then we're going to do the third streak. So let's write flame again. And once it's cool, you start here. And you go one, lift, drag, lift, drag it and lift it, and drag and lift. Okay, four times. Notice how I am making my lines. My lines are not crisscrossing. They are actually parallel lines here. They're parallel lines here. And we're doing that to, to maximize our chances of getting individual colonies in these areas. Okay, so this becomes your third streak, your third quadrant. And again, remind yourself, do not go back into the original two um, to get more bacteria, because that would defeat the purpose of making this dilution. So, so far, the most bacteria should be here, then this should have less bacteria, and then this region should have even less bacteria. And we're going to repeat this a fourth time. So we're going to flame our loop again. And we're doing this to incinerate any microbes that may be on there. And when it's cool, we're going to start here now. And we're going to do one lift, streak, lift, streak it and lift, and streak it and lift. Now notice, again, my lines are parallel. I did not touch the side of the plate. If you touch the side of the plate, oftentimes you, can, you may uh, pick up some contamination from the top um, of the base. So avoid touching the sides of the plate when you're doing this. Um, and notice that I didn't touch the original streak area in the first quadrant. If I did that, then I would pull all of this bacteria into the area where I should have the least amount of bacteria. Okay, so um, your fourth instruction here is to do your final streak. In the fourth quadrant, we can actually extend this arrow up here. Streak, oops, flame, streak. And then you want to flame your loop again just to remove any microbes before you set it down. If you do this method correctly, when you look at your plates after incubation, what you will find is the bacteria have spread out. Okay, for example, like this one here. Okay, so you can see that this would be the first area that was streaked. And actually, let me turn this around so you can see. Okay, so this is the first quadrant that was streaked. You can see there's the most bacteria. Then the second here, so less bacteria. And then the third, we have individual colonies showing up here. Okay, you see the individual colonies showing up here. And then in the fourth quadrant, we didn't get any bacteria because it was too dilute, but that's okay, because what we really want to ensure is that we're just getting individual colonies. And the reason we like to have individual colonies is because that helps us to determine if the culture is a pure culture or a mixed culture. A pure culture will have colony characteristics of the colonies that are all uniform, and a mixed culture will have colonies that have differential um, colony characteristics. And so this is how we do the inoculations. Now, after we're done with that, we do need to incubate this. So we're going to take all of these, okay, and we're going to incubate everything in the incubator. Okay, and um, make sure you have loose caps here on the tubes so that the bacteria can respire while they're growing. And for the streak plate, make sure that you place the plate upside down. Okay, so you want it to be like this. But the cap on the lid is on the bottom, 
and the medium should be up top, like this. So this is the base, okay? And your colonies will end up growing upside down like this. And we do this because oftentimes there's condensation when the water starts to form droplets. And we would prefer that the water condense down here on the lid and not actually where the bacteria is growing. If we get condensation where the bacteria is growing, what that can do is that can actually ruin your plate by causing the, the colonies to wash out, become washed out or merge, and then you will not be able to differentiate the colonies. Okay, and that is it. So, um, what you want to do is then when you come back and look at your data after about 24 hours, what you want to do is look at how the bacteria are growing differentially in the broth cultures. Look how the bacteria look at how the bacteria are growing differentially in the slant cultures, and then look at how they are growing differentially in the streak plates.